Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome back to the corner. I bought a plus four. Does it work? I don't know. Let's find out. So what we've got here is a plus four, a cassette recorder, a bunch of tapes and the dreaded brick. This is one of the original old potted ones. It's got a date on the back, September 1985. It's heavy, so it's one of the ones that is a death sentence, probably. But it does have the proper connector on it. Maybe we can save this by cutting that off and putting this connector onto a new power supply. I'm not going to plug this in. Cassette drive, I have no idea if it works or not. There's a little bit of sort of cable rash on there. And that's been smeared with something. Made in Taiwan. Bit of... Um, something on the casework there. I don't know if that's staining or if that's... It's a weird pattern. It looks like it's been sort of taped and the tape's been ripped off maybe. Anyway, that is going to need a look at possibly a clean and, and possibly new rubber bands. These, I have no idea what these cassettes are. Other than it would appear there are two copies of Number Builder, but I have actually looked inside. Most of these are what they say on the box, but this is actually Mastertronic Commodore 16 Tutti Frutti. Again, I'm not really a game player, so I've no idea what any of these actually do. But if we get this to work, we can have a play. This keyboard at least needs cleaning. Goodness knows what is on there. I'm going to suggest it's blood stains. And this is the victim of blood spatter and murder and deeds most foul. <laughs> Maybe this should be the Halloween special. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay make all kinds of printed circuit boards, whether it's for production or just for prototyping. And prices start from just $5 for five boards, or quite often $5 for 10 boards. This is just a few of the circuit boards that I've bought from them over the last couple of years. Some of these boards you've seen featured on the channel before, and some of them you haven't. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, a whole host of other stuff. PCBWay are running their sixth project design contest, and there are big prizes on offer. Entries are from now until January of 2024. Check them out, www.pcbway.com. So a quick test of the power supply, just to make sure that it is okay. Or at least if it has gone, then we know it's gone. So you can see from the back, 220 volts, 50 hertz, 9 volts at 1 amp and 5 volts at 1.5 amps. So we should expect to see about 5.2. Now the top two pins here by the dimple are the 9 volts AC and the bottom two pins are the 5 volts DC. So I've got multimeter on DC, energize the power supply. I've got some simple shrink wrap that I'm just going to stick over the pins so that I don't short anything out. So we should be able to see, that should be ground or naught volts, and that should be 5 volts. There we go, 5.22. So that I think is okay. Just gonna set that to AC. 50 hertz, 10.25 volts AC. Okay, so that's about right. It shouldn't blow the machine up anyway. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with a new one. Because these things are never, never reliable. And eventually it will go. And they fail so that the 7805 will fail so that the output becomes the input voltage and it will go up to about 10 volts and that will fry this but it clearly hasn't done that because 5.2 is the nominal output voltage so we are good
Now I'm not going to power this on and plug it in before I've at least looked inside and certainly before I've cleaned it at least a bit. And that keyboard is horrible. But let's see what the rest of it looks like. EA5227626. 5 volts 1.7 amps, 9 volts 1 amp. There are five screws. I don't know what the condition of this is going to be. Never looked inside a plus four. Obviously I've seen seen them on YouTube. So that's a little sort of edge connector. Right, the good thing is that these are all socketed. See some moss chips there, that's probably a bad idea. It's a bit dusty at the back, but it's cleaner at the front. Okay, before I go too much further, get the old metal bracelet out. There we go, and that is socketed too. So, the only big chip that is not socketed is this one, I guess. That I guess that's the PLA, the CPU, that's the TED, these I guess are ROMs. Now at some point I will give it a recap, but for the time being it probably doesn't need it. The back looks pretty clean. There's some flux residue around the connectors and the things that would have been hand soldered. What we could do is replace this power socket with one from a C64 because they are pin compatible or at least they are connector compatible. But I don't have one at the moment and I'm not sure that it's really necessary. So, a bunch of jumpers, I don't quite know what those are for. Configurations, I suppose. Certainly the connectors look like they are somewhat dirty. Doesn't look like it's been reworked anywhere that is not sort of part of regular manufacturing. And I'm going to go over this with some IPA and just clean the board up. And then I should clean the case up. And let's have a quick look at this keyboard. Don't like that ribbon cable, it looks like it's very fragile. The fact that it's in a sort of plastic wrapper doesn't all go well. So, screws again. Unless it's necessary, I don't see the need to take the backing off. At least not for the time being. We will discover whether the keyboard works or not in due course. This little copper cone thingy connects to that. It just provides earthing to the keyboard. Neat little trick. This computer, of course, is designed by the legendary Bill Hurd, who went on to do the 128, which is my favourite computer, of course. This has got to be a close second, um, at least in terms of looks, but not this keyboard. Ugh. I mean, it's not so much dust bunnies as a dust warren. It's a bit odd that it's dirty that side and less dirty that side. Maybe the previous owner did make some effort, I don't know. So it's a good job this is a wipeable surface. And that just came out from between the keys and it's not a thorough cleaning. The keys are going to come off and this is going to go, well maybe the board is not going to go in the sink, but the keys are going to go in the sink and get a really good cleaning before we put those back. I think they need to be retro brighted as well. They're very quite yellow. But maybe I'll just clean the tops of them for now. 
until we see if it works or not and then take them off afterwards. Let's get some more blue, blue roll and some IPA and a cotton bud and just clean the worst of this stuff off. That is in no sense clean. It's a little bit better than it was. Okay, now, should we? I'm dying to know. So we have done testing of the power supply brick and shown that it does, in fact, generate the right voltages. Certainly it should be okay for one quick test because I want to see, is it going to work? And this is really only a quick test to see if it powers up. So, okay, I've put a sheet of paper, or cardboard rather, underneath that. Let's activate the power supply. This will see whether it's, this will see whether we are doing a repair or a restoration. Oh, look at that, it works. And the keyboard seems to work as well. I'm not pressing it too hard, but the LED comes on. Awesome. Right, let's not tempt temp fate too much. That's the reset button. That's the off switch. Cool. Let's pull some keycaps. Well, that is almost as disgusting as before I brushed it out originally. But we can give that a good clean. And I'm going to give the keycaps a good clean. And the springs will do with a bit of a clean. Let's do it. So we'll start off with a fairly simple wash in some dish soap. Nice warm water, we'll let them soak in that for a while and then give them a good scrub. Okay, it's been in here a couple of hours. You can see the colour of the water is quite dirty. Now, if you have a look at these, they are quite yellowed. You can definitely see from the colour of the inside to the colour of the outside. So they are going to go in the retro bright for a while. See if we can whiten them up. I don't know if this will come out because it's almost midnight. This has been in for a few hours, well, all evening and most of the afternoon. So it's time to come out. Right. Let's turn that off. Let's 
So this has been cooking nicely with the aquarium heater. These are already looking better. Right, and give these a rinse. That used to be yellow. And it's not daylight, but this does look a lot whiter. Okay, now I've got the keys back from the retro brighting, and these are looking a lot lighter and a lot cleaner. But before I go around and put these back into the keyboard, which again is also a lot cleaner. I'm going to take the back off because I've got a feeling some of these keys might not be making good contact. It seemed when I was going through the keyboard earlier on, it seemed that some of them you had to press several times before they came up. So I'm gonna have a look. Given how dirty the keyboard was, I think it's probably a good idea. So off come the millions of screws. Well, I guess that answers we. We did not mean to do that. Aha. Of course it's soldered down. There we go. There we go. The board actually does look a bit grubby, so I think those contacts do need cleaning. And also I have to put all these switches back. So let's just put that there to support it. Try not to actually touch the carbon pieces because you can get fingerprint oils on them and that will not do them very much good. So these are just PCB contacts. So we should be able to just wipe it down with some IPA. There's definitely some dirt coming off on that. Okay. Screws left over, no holes left over. So let's start putting the keys back.
Okay, we appear to be one spring short. I didn't notice putting two springs on one key, but in any case we've got a problem with this key because the little clips have broken. So I'm going to need to figure a way of sticking that down. But for now, I've got another spring somewhere. Here we go. It's probably going to be too big and too strong, but we can give it a go. Right, given that we know we need to repair that at some point, let us rebuild the computer. And just compare that to what the keyboard was like before. That is so much better. Now I will be building a new power supply, but for now this one should work okay. At least as far as just testing it is concerned. There we go, still working. Now let's go through the keyboard. Okay, the keyboard seems to be working fine. Standard 1531. Looks okay from the outside, let's take it apart. Let's just clean the case out a little bit and put it back together. Right, so the computer is plugged in, the cassette deck is plugged in. Let's grab a tape, any tape. This one is not Number Builder, it is in fact Tutti Frutti. I have no idea whether that's good or bad or what. So. Hopefully, okay.
shift around stop goes to the disc that's Found Tutti Frutti. Well, that did not load. OK, that was entirely my fault. I didn't realise, because I'm not really a tape user, that Load Star was not going to load the first thing off the tape. Instead, it was going to try and find a thing called Star. So, you have to get that back in. You have to just type Load. and then it's going to load it. There we go, it's found it. And now it's loading. It said loading. There it is, Mastertronic Tutti Frutti. And there it is. Press fire to start. Well, I don't have a joystick, so I'm not going to get very far. Enough of that. Shall we try something else in the hope that it actually has a um, keyboard entry? Space Sweep and Invaders. I have no idea what any of these are. I think I can probably put the cover back on. Ah, this one has a keyboard, so K for keyboard. Does it, does it tell me what to use though? Well, that's me being crap at video games. But then you knew that. No, never mind. So that's the Commodore Plus 4. Right, so... A package has arrived from some unknown supplier. 
and hopefully we have some capacitors. Look at that. Enough capacitors here to recap a whole host of plus fours and other machines. I love there we go. It's easier to get a stack of these things in than just buy a few that you need because it's so much cheaper that way. So these are the capacitors. Here is the machine. Let's just unhook the video cable. So. Right, let's identify what we've got. These are all um, they're either Nichicons, Rubicons, or Panasonics. Let's get to it. Right, that's everything. I've also cleaned off the gunk because we're going to put new gunk on it anyway. Quick check for polarity. Yeah. Good. Let's clean it up and put it back together. It seems my little um, tube of thermal paste has gone AWOL, so... I've got the next best thing, heat sink tape. This is what you put on those self adhesive heat sinks that stick to the chip. Pull some of this off. So that goes on there. And then Making sure that's the right way around. There we go. So now, before we screw it in, let's just try it out. Need to worry about the keyboard. And there we go, we've got no keyboard, but we've got a working machine. Okay, so line up the screw holes and let's screw it down. Don't forget to turn it back until you hear it click. And now we can put the keyboard back. We're going to have to look at that keyboard cable soon.
There we go. Yeah, we still have to look at that spring at some point. The keyboard cable will need replacing at some point. And here we have the plus four. So we don't have a huge choice of cassettes. I suppose we should look to see what the keys are. Shift, Commodore and Space. It doesn't seem to do much apart from bounce around that little corner. And it says this odd little glitch every now and then. Anyway, that's rubbish. My official verdict on that. What a rubbish game. So that's the plus four. There's obviously a little bit more work to do on it, but I think on the whole it's um, functional. It works. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon for some exclusive videos and also for um, early access and ad free access to these videos. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.